Welcome back to another installment of Uncharted. This time, we're moving up to the Midwest to chase after a hot northern bike. Oh, get him. Our mission is to take you along with the journey chasing after everything from largemouth bass all the way to pelagic trout and salmon. Oh, that's him. That's him. <laughs> there he is. Good one, good one, good one. Get the neck. Oh, oh it's something big. It's something huge. Something huge. Oh my gosh. Keep it Dude, tight. keep it tight. Dude, I could not be more stoked to catch this fish. We got, a good, we got a good little window right here where we can escape the storm. We're just gonna go get back to the ramp, put the cover on the low, and get out of here. This is really, really natural stuff. We have finished our little marina session here and are off to bigger and better things. For now, sit back, stay tuned, and enjoy yet another episode of Uncharted. Welcome back to another installment of Uncharted. This time, we're moving up to the Midwest to chase after a hot northern bite. Started in Fond du Lac, making our way down south to Chicago with a stop in between. Our mission is to take you along with the journey chasing after everything from largemouth bass all the way to pelagic trout and salmon. As well as hunting down some fish, we're going to be experiencing the local eats and going head to head in some challenges on and off the water. Throughout this epic series, we're gonna be racking up some points, which will ultimately result in one of us being able to donate $1,000 to a charity of our choice, courtesy, of course, of Mercury Marine and Catch Co. You'll learn more about the point system later, but for now, sit back, stay tuned, enjoy yet another episode of Uncharted. Right now, we are putting in at Lake Winnebago up here at Fond du Lac, and uh, I'm excited. You know, last time we did the Uncharted tour, John and I and Perrick were trying to smack some redfish, and now we're doing smallmouth, and Norm and myself have not really caught many smallmouth ever before, so I'm super stoked on that. And we're gonna hop out in the water here, and John's dumping us in, and we're gonna open up the envelopes and see what our first challenge for day one is gonna be. Grass? Yeah, you see that? we're like on top Dude, of that's like right that's like hardcore grass right there. At the moment, we have a few marks that we're trying to find right here, and we're looking at like a really good rock spine just on like Google Maps of all things. And uh, John's John's gracious. He's just saying to us as much as he wants to uh, whoop on us and the challenges that we have. He really just wants to see us catch fish as well. Since Norm and I have never done anything like this, but we're kind of getting on a big point coming off an island, and we're just gonna start fishing and see if we can get connected. The whole objective of this series is to compete against each other. Every man for themselves. So we actually have a challenge today. Uh, we have to open up these envelopes which have mystery tasks in them and see what exactly we have to do because more so than, than, than catching fish as a challenge, we have to also you know, figure out what uh, Ketchco and Mercury Marine has in stores for us. All right, we gotta open the Ketchco Day one challenge to see what we're going to be doing out here today. Day one. We got the card. Day one challenge. So first fish is going to be 25 points. Okay. Largest fish, 50 points. By like length, because I don't have a scale. Okay, Most length. Do length, yeah. Most fish, 75 points. And each species, 50 points per species. So that means your first fish is 75 points, basically. Whoever catches the first fish yes. gets 75 yes. points. First yeah. blood, 20 or 25 points. It sounds like the goal is to just not chase after large mouth. It's pike, dude. Yeah. I'm just on a straight pike mission ceiling. <laughs> dude, I'm <laughs> just gonna catch every single species in this lake. I don't even know what swims in here, but they're gonna bite it. Okay, well, let's get after it. All right. First catch. So there's two things you need to find when you're fishing up here up north in the summertime, either shade, or deep structure. What we're fishing right now is deep structure. It's actually shallow structure that's surrounded by deep water. It's a hump. It's about a six to five, five to six foot hump, surrounded by ten to eleven. We're sitting in ten. It just seems like it would hold fish. We are getting some nibbles. It's just not like mobbed, 
with uh, with scaly little creatures. We're just gonna kind of give this a moment. It feels weird fishing this kind of stuff because you're out in the middle of the lake. There's not a breeze in sight. There's no one around you, and you're just fishing slow for that one good thump. I truly don't know what caliber fish are in this lake, but um, if I had to guess, the big ones are out here in this kind of this this kind of stuff where the rock is, where the humps are. We're just fishing slow for like one good bite. I just know what this kind of fishing can do. My plan is to just get all the multi-species, because that's worth 50 points. And we're out here at a new lake. I completely have beginner's luck. Like that should be going on right now. I'm throwing everything is new to me. Everything I'm a beginner at what I'm doing right now. Just gotta get that big one to bite. It'll happen. Oh. All right, how deep are we? What's the deal? Seven foot Seven rocks. Foot rocks. Oh my god, I'm on. I'm on. No, he came off! Oh, what the hell? Dude, it was on the way up. That felt good. That felt like really good. What? I almost wonder if I snag something. Oh no. There's the teeth marks. Boys, get ready for this. This is happening. This is happening. Oh my god. That was 300% a fish that ate it. I think it might have been a walleye. It was such a gummy eat. We got this. We got this. That fish made a slim shake. Okeechobee craw color. In about eight feet of water on this nice rocky point. That was the biggest bite of the day, no doubt. Don't know how I dumped him though. That was really rookie-ish of me. Just dragging this thing over some rocks. He just grabbed it so hard. I don't think he had the uh, hook. He just had the tail. I'm on. Oh my god. I'm on. Oh. I'm on. It's a fish. No way. What is it? What is it? I'm really curious. I think it's a rock bass. If I had to guess, I'd probably say, yep. <laughs> None other. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Got him. First fish of the day. It only took, uh, what was that? Five hours. And it's probably one of the, I gotta tread lightly here, wackest northern fish species you can catch, but also pretty unique. This is a, uh, a northern endemic fish. It is a rock bass. Similar to, like, it was almost like if a crappie and a small without a baby, this is what it would look like. Um, but I do believe that's 25 points. And it's also an extra 75, right? 75 or 50? I think 75 in total. You get I've got the yeah. most fish, the biggest. <laughs> I've also got the first. Cha-ching. Thank you. Thank you. I've never been so happy to catch a rock bass before my entire life. And she's gone. Sick rock bass, dude. That was, dude, I just got hit right there underneath the boat. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. What were you saying about my rock bass? Uh, that is sick. I'm re rigging right now. You know, those rock bass have pretty ferocious teeth, so I gotta re tie and make sure my gear is in check for the next behemoth. I'm actually using a little weight that you guys can pick up on uh, shopcrawls.com. It's, it's their drop shot weights. Really inexpensive. It's actually good to get inex inexpensive weights if you're fishing lots of rock because you're gonna lose a lot of these. So, unlike other people, I don't like using tungsten drop shot weights because I just know that they, uh, they easily get hung up. No way. <laughs> no, you don't. What is it? What is it? Oh, it's a drum! Oh, you caught a drum! Yeah! Get him in! Get him in! No way! Yes! You caught a drum! Yes! Oh, he had one too. No, I got Still him. I got him. Oh my gosh, what he just came it? off, what man. I have no clue. It looked big. He was pulling pretty hard. Ah, that I know. Chaotic. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> I don't think you understand how stoked I am about that fish. That is a freshwater drum. Is there a clip of you saying how you wanted to catch one today? It had to Dude, be. Dude, I've been talking about this like that? all I wanted to catch all day. This right I here. Feel. Oh, you snagged something. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that on oh, my worm. No kid. That is a fat scale too. Whatever that was. I do a lot of saltwater fishing and uh, black drum and redfish. This thing looks like a black drum, but without the black stripes on it. That is like the coolest thing ever. I'm stoked on this tiny thing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and our last uncharted, we caught redfish, a different type of drum, and uh, yeah. now we're up in Wisconsin oh, catching another. Oh. oh, it's something big. It's something huge. It's something huge. Oh my gosh. Enormous. Keep it Dude. Tight. Keep it tight. We're gonna go get him. Keep it tight, keep it tight. I'm Don't. keeping it tight. I, got, I just got bit too. It's 
something big. This is this is gonna take big fish, hundred hundred percent. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a rock. <laughs> no, I'm I'm memeing. No, it's hundred percent a fish. I'm on the snagging pattern right now. I got that scale on my last cast. I cast in the same spot. We're about to see what that scale came from. On that line. Boys, our luck has changed. Okay, okay, you lost the rod position there. That was a little sketchy. Woo! I just want to see him, man. He's getting close. Big drop! Big drop! Get him! It's a big drop. No way. Let's go, boys. That's my biggest drum. I don't even think I've caught a drum ever. That's so cool. <laughs> what the heck just happened? That's so dark. That is so sick. I'm so jealous now, dude. Catching this little Woo! peanut drum. Oh, he's got the biggest one of the day. Nice fish, dude. Wow. Yeah, that was Good insane. Job, I set the hook into him, and I was expecting him not to fight. I thought it was a snack, like carp or something. Dude, that's so cool, man. Don't you do it. Nope. Oh, my gosh. How cool is that? Look at that. That's my biggest drum ever. Probably my first drum ever, to be fair. Look at that. That's such a cool fish. We are at 22 and a quarter. 22 and a quarter, that is a pretty sizable drum. 22 and a quarter, man. So that means that I am now in the lead for big fish, and I don't know about the other points, but I think John's still in the lead with that uh, that five incher there, but. Look at that, that's my first ever drum. That was so much fun. Man, you never know what's gonna bite down here too. Like I have no clue what's in this lake. So when he was fighting, I had no clue what I was, what I was reeling in. Stuff like this, man, you don't catch in Florida Lake, so this is really cool. But uh, we're gonna let her go. I'm excited to get on the board here. I was getting a little worried when these two guys ended up catching something. I was like, uh-oh. But here, here she goes. All right, so I was throwing the shaky head with the Slim Shake on here. A little bit of a green, a little bit of a blue color. There she is right here, that's the rig. Getting it done. That was good. I saw that. Oh, oh that's, that's decent. That looks decent. It's not peeling out drag like Norm's was, but I'm sitting there and I'm off. getting bumped and bumped. Dude, this feels heavy. You want the nut? I don't know. We'll see. Gosh, man, I was just sitting there dragging it. And Dude, I saw it. like, and it was like, dun, 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 and I let it sit. This fish has weight to it. This has to be another drum, I think, right? You think it's a smallmouth? Yeah. Oh, I just saw a big boil on the surface. That drag. Is it loose? I'll loosen up a little. I think you're a small one. That's fine, like a small one. No, it's a big drum again. The drum, oh my god. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what in the hell is going on here? Dude, it left like a giant boil. There's a boil. school of them. You want me to nut it? Um, I got you. Cool, it's super light on this fish. We're throwing 10 pounds. Oh, it's a good one too. Look at the size of that drum. <laughs> this is so much fun. Dude, I could not be more stoked to catch this fish. It's <laughs> a good one. Got him. Boom! <laughs> They're really red in here, dude. I've not seen them. Dude, I've not seen drum look like that. This is so sick. Second drum for me right there. A little upgrade in size for me. Not quite as big as Norm's for sure, but this is like the coolest thing of all time. Like if you fish salt water and you know what a black drum looks like, this looks like a bronze version of a juvenile black drum. It is insane. And they fight super freaking hard and we're fishing Ned rigs in eight feet of water off rock piles and there must have been a school of them rolled in just like redfish and black drum back home though rolling schools and pulled up onto us and we're getting getting on them that is so sick there's one he dropped it Drop it again. I'm on. There we go. There we go. I'm on. Oh, it's a smallie. No way. We actually have a. No way. This is so sick. I cannot believe it. Smallie. <laughs> wow. So funny. When you go to try to catch something that's not what your target species is, you end up catching the target species. That right there is the fish we've been after all damn day. It just took us forever to find one. Nice little bronze smallie. So cool, like we're at the point now where we're just fishing for drum because that seems to be the only thing that's biting. Of course, of course, once we start fishing for drum, we get some small eye It's a beautiful fish, really dark, really, really dark colors. That I believe means that I'm on top for species, rock bass and smallmouth. Hell yeah. 
and back down she goes. Small mouth, it took us all freaking morning to get that little bite right there, but it was worth it. I'll take it, we got drum in the boat, we got rock bass in the boat, and finally, we have a small mouth. As much as I want to stay out here and grind all day for a few more rock bass and some sheep's head, there's a lot more to do in Fond du Lac, believe it or not. We're gonna go actually check out the facility in which mercury outboards and inboards are made. So that'll be kind of cool. We'll get to see how motors are made and stuff like that. Uh, but for now, we gotta clean up the boat, get back up behind the steering wheel, and zoot down south, back to the ramp. Welcome to Mercury Marine Headquarters, seeing as they're one of our big sponsors of this trip. We decided to check out their facilities and how they make props for your outboard or inboard motors. So we're gonna go in this big facility right here and see exactly how it's done. Let's check it. First, first ever motor, it's a 2.4 horsepower. Uh, they called it, was that the name of the motor, Thor? It's called the Thor, it's a pretty badass name. You guys need to go back to the naming of like <laughs> Thor. That's a pretty hardcore name for a little motor like this. Really interesting to see how far, you know, equipment has come. Like compare this to the 150 that I have on the back of my boat. It's pretty incredible. So that was the first one like 80 years ago. Just to go and look at what got us to point A to point B today to catch those fish, we wouldn't be able to do it without the Mercury engine. So it's cool to see where they started and just the progression is absolutely insane. The technology in the next 20 years, who knows man, this is crazy. Well, I have to say that was pretty cool. It was uh, tough to leave such a fierce bite out on uh, Lake Winnebago, but this was a nice little stop. We got to check out something I have never really seen before. I had no idea that that much work goes into making the prop that is on the back of my boat currently. It's a very, it's like a very hands-on uh, uh, ritual. Like they, I thought it was just this assembly, like a big machine does it, but there's like three dudes working heavily over like million degree heat, you know, pouring these stainless steel props. Pretty epic stuff. And it was cool to check out the Heritage Hall as well to kind of see where the company started and, and how it's progressed. Uh, it's funny to think that my motor came from right here. This is where it was born. It's uh, probably feeling a little homesick, but um, yeah, just wanted, to, just wanted to bring the motor back to where it came from. So we're gonna go do some more stuff. From here on out, I think the best thing to do for especially these two guys, I've experienced it before, but for these two guys is to have a real good taste of Wisconsin. And by taste, I literally mean taste. That being, you know, spotted cow, uh, brats, cheese curds, all that good stuff. So we're gonna go get some grub. We haven't eaten anything all day. And catching drum is just, oh man, it really builds up an appetite. So we're gonna do just that. So long, Mercury. We are peacing out, signing out. And until next time. Stop off a little joint right now. I'm gonna introduce these guys to the wonderful beautiful, amazing world of cheese curds. Fried cheese curds to be exact. There's two type, there are two types of cheese curds. There's regular and there's fried. You can get them in any shape, size, flavor. They could be white cheddar. They could be pretty sure mozzarella. They could be Gouda. Like they could just, cheese curds. That's what fuels Wisconsin. That Walters, walleye, for those of you guys who are endemic to this beautiful state. 
So we're gonna get some cheese skirts to start off with. You guys cool with that? Good, because you don't have a choice. And then <laughs> maybe, maybe later on today we'll try a brat. Brats are huge in Wisconsin, so we gotta try that as well. It is one of, I think, the underrated things about getting to fish and travel around is, you know, everywhere we go, we're, the main focus is the fish and what we're trying to do, but when you go to all these different areas, you get to eat a ton of different food, even inside the U.S. and outside the U.S. and here. John says it's all about the curds and the brats, and I'm always down for some cheese and some sausage, so I'm stoked for that. And then, you know, last Uncharted we did with Louisiana, and we're eating fried fish and crab, and you just can't go wrong. There's good food everywhere to be found, and that's kind of one of my favorite parts about travel. Yeah. That's Pretty good, good man. man. I can bathe in this. Yeah. yeah. I can I can eat this for the rest of my life. Give me another one. That's a good pool part. The Wisconsin cheese thing, like, it holds up. It it stands up to uh, what they say. We got some grub in our system. We checked up the mercury facilities. Pretty dope morning, pretty dope evening. Or, uh, sorry, afternoon. Now we're gonna get back on the lake. We're gonna go back on Winnebago. We were going to fish some ponds, but there really is not a whole lot of ponds around here. And uh, to be quite honest, I don't know about you guys, but I've got kind of a bone to pick with this lake. I, I feel like I have to build my, my true potential on this, in this spot. So we've actually traveled up to the central part of the lake, where the Fox River dumps into the, to the big waters, and we're gonna try it yet again. We're gonna put the low with the mercury back in the drink and see if we can catch some smallmouth. I, I drum are cool, like don't get me wrong guys, but I really want to catch a big old fat smallie jaw. That's what we're doing. We are seven minutes from the boat ramp. Meet you there. We are currently back on Lake Winnebago. This is the last chance for this lake to truly prove itself to us, to see if it is actually as good as we anticipated it to be. The challenge is still going on, by the way, so we are still fishing for that $1,000 charity donation. Charity I'm gonna be fishing for this trip is the fund for Lake Michigan. The charity I'm gonna be fishing for is Take a Vet Fishing. So the cause that I'll be fishing for this week is gonna be uh, Wisconsin Fish and Wildlife Foundation, which is a really good cause. The reason why I chose Wisconsin Fish and Wildlife is because they really advocate towards uh, conservation, education, teaching people the importance of you know conserving waterways and uh, public land because without this kind of stuff we wouldn't have these videos you guys wouldn't be able to out, wouldn't be able to go out and have fun and catch lots of fish and hunt on uh, amazing land so it's a very important thing to kind of educate the next generation and uh, that's exactly what uh, Wisconsin Fish and Wildlife does if you guys want to check them out go to wiwf.org to see how their efforts apply to real success in the conservation and education to see how you can also get involved. There's one, there's one. Come on, 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 come on, on. Yeah. Come on. There you go. I'll take strong Oh no, it was a good one. <laughs> oh, no. He spit it. Like a two Dude, and a half pound that was a good fish. Yeah, big smallmouth. Oh, that was a good fish. He had it too. No. I lost a good fish. Such a terrible hook set on my part, but it's a good sign. We're just getting out to this river. Now we're fishing the Fox River, which I believe dumps into Lake Winnebago. There's current here. The water's a little bit cooler. It just makes more sense this time of year to fish in current. So this river is just rushing at the moment. I had a nice one, the Kraken Crawl dumped them. Just an idiot move. But at least we're figuring something out, you know? 18 foot, wow, that's deep. Is that what the guy called it? Yeah, Yeah, there's fish there. There's fish there. Oh, Rocky. Hey, you. All right, there's a few things. One, we finally found some fish. Not necessarily the fish we're looking for. This is a rock bass right here. Beautiful little ham sandwich. But one thing, that puts me at three fish, the most fish for the day, I believe. And it's our first fish of the afternoon sesh. So things could be on the turning point here. I am fishing small and slow, throwing a mushroom head jig, a uh, mushroom head Ned rig, and I'm gonna throw in actually a Guggen bait uh, Ned. And that is literally the next cast. No, it's, another species. it's a smallie. Oh my gosh, it's like a tiny smallie, but that puts me for four 
fish, three species, not anything great or luxurious, not gonna break any PBs for me. You know, I've caught like eight smallmouth in my entire life. But that puts me at four fish, three species. Okay, he can just go away. Wow. Uh, it's, it's doing good for me. This is, this is good. Come on, come on. No way. No no way. Come on. This is my first ever small dude. <laughs> yes. Hey, how about this one right here? Is that a triple up? Are you kidding? I've caught three fish back to back cast. And that, my friends, is, is looking like a little Nerf ball smallie right there. He's good. They are such cool fish, man. That is really cool. My first ever smallmouth. Not a big one, but I'll take it, man. I've been wanting to catch one of these fish for 21 years now. So for a smallmouth, we're going to let him go. There we go. I got to get back in there. Uh, smallie? That's a good smallie. Don's on. About time we got some better fish. That is a good one. Yep, that's a good smallie. That, that is, is what we really are after. One. That is, that is my biggest smallmouth of the day. Nice little fish. Let's go catch some more. Just cranked slim shake. Doing a little Okeechobee cross slim shake. This water's dirty, so I'm trying to do something that's got some blue into it, a little blue flake. And that guy wanted it. Biggest smallmouth. Yes, that's a good feeling. Oh, I have one. <laughs> Water skimming. What is that? Micro smallie. Micro smallie. I don't think that counts as a different species, and it's raining. Well, nice. I am on smallmouth, I think. Yo. That's how you do it right there. Austin's caught five, I've caught four. I'm catching up. Smallmouth. That one's a little bit bigger than the last one, but by no means a toad. But we're going to go ahead and let him go. All right, I'm gonna do it again. There it is. Oh, oh stay down, Jesus. baby. Small mouth, right? Small? Yes. Margie. No. <laughs> oh, it almost was. <laughs> Better get him in, bud. <laughs> no way. They uh, nearly, nearly failed boat flip on 10 pound test and a micro light spinning rod nearly cost me this fish, but that is my sixth fish of the day and my fourth species, I believe. So far, I've had a drum, a smallmouth, a largemouth, and a rock bass. And that's the first largemouth that I've caught all day. Woo! Oh, that's him, that's him. Number five. I think it's another super small smallie, yeah. <laughs> small ones are eating the crank today. Norm is, uh, is putting a hammer on the Guggen Squad crankbait. I am uh, fishing shaky. I'm getting some bites, but just not really connected. And then Lawson's throwing the rattle and nut, just putting them in the coffin straight up. We're just, it's just nice to actually catch some fish that we're after, you know, so small, that one large mouth. Feels good. Now, the, the, the crusty part is, is the fact that the store. He's got one. Oh, that's a good one. That's a bit. Oh, yeah. I think that ties us up, Lawson. I think we're tied six to six here. You got me beat on species, though. All right, you didn't even get that one. We're gonna count it though. Oh, oh my, oh my, oh my gosh. Something big, yeah, it's definitely snagged. Do you see that? Is that a carp? What is that? Oh no, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a drum. No way. Yeah, yeah. Get the net. Where's that? It's, uh, it's behind the, it's behind the oh, yeah. driver's seat. He ate it? Yeah. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> I thought I is snagged it. Is it bigger than your other one? Yeah. Is it? Oh yeah, he ate it. <laughs> that's huge. Look at the gun that's on that mad. Thing. I think that's, is that bigger than the last one? I think it's fatter for sure. Oh my God. All right, so that's, uh, that's fish number seven for me, and this might even be beat my old big fish. I th what the f was that? <laughs> what happened? He flopped, and I was not about to let him oh my heck myself, so he went in the water. I think that one was bigger than, what was it, 22 and a quarter inches? I don't know, I think that one was bigger, but we didn't. Ow! <laughs> quick release, am I right? Both these guys are up here fishing, I had to toss them back in real quick. Definitely was not accidental, I didn't want a picture at all. But uh, that was actually 
I snapped off the, the GS red square bill, tied on a I'm a square bill. You can get those on shop crawls. You can get them on shop crawls. Make sure you guys go check that out. Cheapest place to get tackle. But we're going to keep on throwing along this wall, man. Slow roll. Actually, I don't want to tell them what I'm doing here. I don't want these guys to know up front. We need to get out of here. This is. This is that coming from behind us? Yes, I know. It's coming fast. It's rolling so quickly. Yeah, we're about to have to outrun this, dude. This is. It doesn't get dark until 9 or anything. We could also chill under one of these bridges until it passes and we get fully. But. That great, right? We couldn't have had a smooth sailing day without something like this. We're gonna go to this bridge and take cover. This is gonna be bad, like really bad. Oh my god! Did you see that, dude? I cannot believe we we're just in that. We were just over there, and I watched the lightning bolt strike where we were catching that those small one. It's, we've been able to fish in like the small rain, but then out of nowhere, this huge storm came, and I don't know how long we're gonna be trapped under here because we're pretty far away away from where we put in. And uh, this is dangerous. We're out of here. We're, we got to go. There's another one. <laughs> Jesus. We got, a good, we got a good little window right here where we can escape this storm. We're just going to go get back to the ramp, put the cover on the low, and get out of here. This is really, really nasty stuff. We were just saying, if we decided to fish the main lake today, or I guess in the afternoon, we would have actually been in some serious danger. Like, imagine being out there, middle of Lake Winnebago, which is a big lake, big rollers, lots of rain, potentially getting struck by lightning. Not a good scenario. We're fortunate that we picked the river to fish this afternoon because we could hide under there. We were close to the ramp. No big deal. Dodge a serious bullet, no doubt. So we uh, tried to make a break for it in the middle of the storm and we kind of had the rain stop. The wind was still howling. So we tried to uh, make a break back to the ramp. It was only 500 yards. And uh, we definitely got caught back in the storm again. We missed the gap. Yeah, we missed the gap and then had uh, in the rush of trying to pull the boat out of the water kind of screwed it up and put it on lopsided and had to back it back down and made it a much bigger ordeal than what it should have been because we just were trying to rush hashtag uncharted hashtag i think i lost the history all right we pulled off the road here at the lake shore mart and uh the loser of today's challenge has to have a drink that has a minnow inside of it. I guess there's a place here that they serve drinks with minnows in. This is it, this is my punishment. Thankfully these guys are good sports and they're gonna take one with me. So I should have caught more fish today, that's all I gotta say. Cheers. Should I go? No, yeah, do you try fast? Not bad. No, <laughs> that'd be a lot worse. Could be like a roacher sucker. You're next, Chief. All right. Keep it down. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there you go. I had him on my mouth for like two seconds, man. <laughs> he was flopping around. You let him marinate a bit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that was terrible. And last but not least. I think, well, no, I've Norm might have won today, but yeah. Norm and I came in second place. Neither of us really need to do this, but like, what a funny experience. And yeah. we can't leave John hanging. You gotta be a good sport. And uh, we need to pass out. We need to pass out drinking a minute. So. Do it. That's a big shot. First, I oh. <laughs> Definitely like adds to the flavor, you know. I like. I'm not not even trying to be dramatic. Definitely felt a little, a little bit of Sticky. like fin going yeah. down. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's not bad. Well, that uh, that might have been the first ever water minnow shot that I've ever done before. To be completely honest, that was the first time I've ever gobbled down a minnow, uh, admittedly. But that was. <laughs> that it's just squirmy. They almost, the people in there, the folks in there almost convinced me to do a Helgramite shot. If you don't know what a Helgramite is, look it up. It's the craziest looking insect ever. But uh, despite the rain, despite the, uh, the seemingly tough fishing, this was a lot of fun today. We really got to experience Wisconsin. Honestly, while, it, while I may have lost today's challenge, it was a win to watch these guys really have fun up north, catch their first moth, their first drum, and experience what this beautiful state has to offer. Minnow shots, 
cheese curd, smallmouth bass, like the whole nine yards. And the cool thing is this is day number one on Uncharted. We've got two more days left. Tomorrow we've got an exciting episode for you guys. And I mean, who's to say what's gonna happen? Hopefully we avoid the rain and that will hopefully be our last minute shot we have to take. But we really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. And we will catch you guys on the next episode of Uncharted. Stick with us, stay tuned, and we'll see you later.